Hi, I'm Sarah Delaney with One Big Happy Yarn Company, and this is a quick tutorial for a project that I just really think is so sweet. This is our Polar Sky Scarf. This is crocheted in interlocking chains. We're using two different yarns, one of which I just adore, um, and that is the Bulky Yarn from Cornbread and Honey. This is hand-dyed um, up in Ohio. And she actually did this color just for us. So it's really special and it's a limited edition. We do have other colors from her. I'm gonna be working on the sample in another color today. So, um, but this Polar Sky color is just, it's so pretty. It's, it's almost like pastels, but they're just really rich and they flow beautifully together. And it really does look like a really cold, wintry morning sunrise. Um, and then we're gonna pair that with uh, a kid silk yarn. So we're using Rowan's Kid Silk Haze, which is mohair and a little bit of silk. And if I can separate this out, you can see the little threads, that little shiny bit in the middle. It almost feels like a lace weight yarn, like super, super, super fine. But because it has mohair, it has what we call a halo. And so it has all this fuzziness around it. And you could work this almost as a worsted weight yarn, even though it's like a lace weight, but what we're actually gonna do with this one, because this project needs two yarns that are the same weight, we're gonna hold this triple stranded, and I'll show you real quick how to do that, but we, we also have a stitch support that I'll send you to. So those are your two yarns for this project, but you could really use any two yarns that you want that are the same weight. Um, we'll need some stitch markers. Uh, as a crocheter, you're always gonna want locking stitch markers because we're gonna need to be able to put this into the work and lock it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. You'll need a tapestry needle, you'll need scissors. Our hook for this one is a J10 six millimeter. It's a little bit chunky because we're using some bulky yarn. Um, and I'm using the, um, the Clover Soft Grip hook for this one. So, but whatever hook that, that you are comfortable with, if you already have a J in your hook stash, you can use that one, or you can pick up one of these or one of the other brands that we carry. If you have not yet, you can go to onebighappy.com and pick up a kit for this. We have a bunch of different colors with, uh, a bunch of different color kits with the Cornbread and Honey Bulky Yarn and the Kids Hill Kays from Rowan. Um, for the sample that I'm working on here while I'm teaching you, um, the Cornbread and Honey is Pretty Little Snowbirds. She has such nice names for her hand dyed yarn. So Pretty Little Snowbirds, and then in the Kids Hill case, I'm using the liqueur color. And so those should be really fun together. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the construction of this scarf. So it's really loosey goosey. Like you can see there's a lot of space. There's a lot of negative space in this project. Um, but let me tell you just how warm this is. Sometimes we do tutorials several months ahead of the season. So when we're filming this, it's 80 degrees outside at 6 a.m. And this was keeping me quite toasty, even with all that space in there. So this will keep you quite warm in the wintertime, even with all those holes. So you can see the two yarns here. And this is made lengthwise. So we're not working across in short rows here. We're working lengthwise in long rows. And we're working with one yarn at a time. And then we will interconnect the next yarn. So you get these interlocking chains of stitches. And I just, it, it really, the Kids Hill K's with these colors, it just glows. And I love this project. You ready to dive in? Because I sure am. We're going to start with... Um, the bulky yarn with the cornbread and honey. And I've, I've wound this one into a ball by hand and I don't want it to roll all around. So I'm just gonna plunk it into a flower pot. And that's what I have my yarn in here. We certainly have fancy yarn bowls that you can pick up at onebighappy.com or you know from potters that you know or wood turners that you know. Um, but sometimes I just like to use a nice fancy little flower pot. I'm gonna start with our slip knot that we always start with. Pop that onto my hook and just snug it up against my hook. It's not tight. It still moves around nice and comfortably, slides right around, but it's not big enough that it's gonna fall off. It would catch in the throat of the hook. And then we're gonna do 168 chains. It's a big, long 
chain. So you're going to be doing this bit for a while and you're going to do this for every strip that we make for this scarf. So it's 168 chains that we start with. You're going to want to do this for a while. Um, one of my favorite things to do when creating a chain that's that long is to count by 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now the loop on your hook never counts as anything. It's just potential. So the chain below the loop on my hook, I'm going to pop a stitch marker in that because that was 20. Now I only have to count to 20 again. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. So feel free to use your stitch markers to mark every 20 stitches or every 10 stitches if you want until you get to your 168. And then an extra tip, crochet a couple extra stitches and I'll show you how we can take those out at the end if we don't need them, but you definitely don't want to end the first row of this work and not have enough chains. So give yourself a couple of extra chains at the end. When you think you've got 168 plus a few, meet me back here. Welcome back. You have a super long chain now. I don't have a super long chain because I'm just doing a simple um, demonstration for you, but you will have <laughs> a really long spaghetti chain. Once you've got all your stitches, what we're going to do is a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So we're going to count back from the hook. One, two, three. In that third chain, we'll do a double crochet. So yarn over first, into the chain, yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two more. Now in this pattern, in this project, that bit of chain that's left over counts as a stitch. So right now we have one, two stitches. We're gonna do three more double crochets, one in each of the next three chains for a total of five double crochets. So there's our third one. There's our fourth one. There's our fifth one. Now we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me go back down here to this chain and we're going to skip five. We're going to skip one, two, three, four, five. In that sixth chain, we're going to do a double crochet. Then we're going to do four more double crochets, one in each of the next four chains. One, two, three, four. That gives us a total of five double crochets. Double check yourself. One, two, three, four, five. If anybody in the crochet world ever told you that you don't have to count anything, they're silly. So you have to count everything. It's all counting. So this group of five stitches is done. We're going to chain five, three, four, five. We're going to skip five. One, two, three, four, five. In that sixth chain, we're going to start another group of five double crochets. You're going to do this all the way to the end of this chain. Five double crochets, chain five, skip five, five double crochets all the way to the end. Make sure that you finish with five double crochets. Now, if you listened to me when you started working on your chain, you might have a couple of extra chain stitches. That's all right. Go ahead and work these groups of five chains, skip five, group of five double crochets. Meet me at the end and I'll show you how to deal with those extra chain stitches. All right, I've reached the end of my row. You can see that I've finished this last group of five double crochets and I have a couple extra chains. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually fasten off because I'm not gonna do anything else with this yarn. This row is done. I'm gonna cut my yarn, yarn over and pull through. Now let's deal with these extra chains right here. You're just gonna unravel them. I'm just turning this around so that I can get at it a little bit easier and you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just undoing the slip knot. Now this is tricky because when you pull this tail through, there's still a knot here that you're going to have to undo. If you pull on this, it's going to tighten up a lot. So be loosey goosey and gentle. Don't put any pressure. You can really see that, that knot that lives there. And now, because we were loosey-goosey and gentle, 
it'll come apart. There we go. And you just undo the chains until you get back to the base of the double crochet that you did, and then just give it a little tug and tighten it up. It's not going to unravel in this direction. Your crochet is always only going to unravel from wherever your hook was backwards. It cannot unravel from the bottom up. So you can take those stitches out and not worry about any of that coming apart where you started. So, but why did we do that anyway? Why did I have you do a couple of extra chains? Because this whole scarf is based on these groups of five. And if you chained 168, which is a lot to chain and it's a lot to count, it's a lot to keep track of. And you were like, I got it, I'm good, I got 168. And then you get all the way here and you only had enough for three or four. Where do you put that fifth stitch? Nowhere. You don't wanna to have to take all of this work back out across the 168 chains make the chain one or two stitches longer, and then redo all of this work. So always, when you're starting with a, lo a long foundation chain, just give yourself a couple of extra chains to start with to guarantee that you have enough for that first row of work, and then you can just unwind them, unravel them a little bit at the end. It's a lot less work. All right, that is strip one done. Set it aside. Now we're gonna make strip two, and we're gonna use the mohair yarn. See, it's like, it's ephemeral. It's like, it doesn't exist. You can barely feel it. There's like no weight to it. It's like a feather. And it's beautiful to use just as it is, but I really like it tripled up. It makes such a squishy, squishy, beautiful yarn. And to do that, I'm going to do what's called chain plying, which is a spinning technique to make yarn, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna start with a slip knot, just like we normally do, just like that. But then, I'm not gonna tighten it up because I'm not putting this on a hook. I'm gonna use this to triple our yarn. I'm gonna reach through that slip knot, and I'm gonna pull a loop through as long as my arm will reach and then I'm gonna lay it back against the yarn that's coming out of my yarn bowl. And so now you see we have three strands, right? You see that? I'm gonna start to work with this as one yarn. So now I'm gonna use these three strands and treat them as a single yarn and make the slip knot that goes on my hook. I'm gonna move this yarn bowl over here because it's easier for me to do that. And now we start the same process that we did with the first chain, with the first strip. You're gonna chain 168. You're gonna to have to do this for all seven strips of this scarf. And what I wanna show you is, now you saw me pull these three strands as long as my arm. I'm going to need a heck of a lot more than that for this project. So what happens when you get to the end of what I just pulled and made, which I am almost at here? You can get pretty close to it. And you can see that it's a loop and a strand, right? So you want to get pretty close to the end here and you reach through that loop and you grab the strand and you pull a new loop through. Sometimes you get caught. There's a little knot in there, but in the long run, we're not gonna see that in the work. I'm gonna pull it as long as my arm again, and then match it up against the yarn that's coming out of my yarn bowl. And now I'm back to three strands. Now you can see here, I think a little bit, where the loop that I started sort of catches the new loop that I've made. In the fabric that you're making, Nobody will ever see that little part. See, already worked into what we're working on. So you're gonna chain 168 plus a couple just for insurance, just like we did on the first strip. And when you've got those 168 done, meet me back here. If this chain plying method feels like I can totally do that. I do have a stitch support video that shows you a little bit more in depth with a little bit more practice if you want to do it. You don't have to do it this way. You could take your yarn and a ball winder and wind it into three separate balls 
um, use a kitchen scale to weigh them out as you're winding them so that you make sure that you get the right amount in each one because you want them to be even. We are going to use this entire skein of yarn in this project. Um, so you don't want to have one ball that's significantly larger than the others. Um, but whatever method works best for you to have three strands of this mohair based yarn, that's what you want to use. Keep chaining and come back to me. So that chain felt pretty familiar, I'm sure. And now what we're going to do will also feel familiar. We are going to go back to the third chain from our hook and we are going to double crochet. This starts just the same as our first strip. And I know I can hear you thinking, but Sarah, how is this going to connect with anything if you are just doing what you did before? Well, we're almost there, my friend. We are almost there. I'm just going to make another length of triple strand here so I can keep going. You just have to stop periodically and do that. Give yourself a little bit more. You could triple strand the whole thing and wind it into a ball as you go, but I don't mind doing it a couple of yards at a time. Let's see, we had our chain. We've done two double crochets. We wanna do the third one and the fourth one. I'm just gonna check and make sure I've got one, two, three, four, five, good, okay. Then I'm gonna chain five. Two, three, four, five. This is where we connect. This is where the magic happens. Now we bring this other strip back in because we are gonna connect it along this top edge and we're gonna do it so easy. This space here, I'm gonna reach through, grab my chain and pull it through. Now, I'm just gonna snug this up so I can see where the bottom of that last double crochet was that I did. And I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five. And in the sixth one, I start my group of five double crochets. That's one. It, this stuff is so light and fluffy sometimes, it's hard to actually feel that you're holding it, which I kind of love. There's three. There's four. Five. Then you're gonna chain five more. One, two, three, four, five. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna make myself another length of triple strand. Set that back over there and do exactly what I did before. The next space on strip one, I'm going to reach through, grab the chain from strip two, pull it through. Then I snug this up so I can see the base of that last double crochet that we did. And then one, two, three, four, five. In that sixth chain, I start my next group of five double crochets. And you're just going to do that all the way across the length of strip two. Work on that. Meet me back here when you get to the end. That's the end of strip two. When you've gotten to the end, I, it's still, it's gonna feel weird because it's not connected up here at this end and it's not connected here at this end. This is where the stitch markers come in for me. I like to just connect them it makes me feel better while I'm working on this until we put the border on. But here, I did a lot of extra chains, right? I must have been feeling pretty insecure when I did my 168. I don't want to have to unravel all of those. I'll show you a secret. You can cut it. Don't panic. Remember I said earlier that crochet is never going to unravel from the bottom up? It's not. You can unravel it in a controlled situation. And it's a little hard to unravel mohair anyway. This stuff really wants to stick to itself. So you really don't need to worry about this ruining everything that you've just done. It's not gonna happen. Like I'm really having to work to pick this apart. And I think, yep, that's it. Now I can sort of snug up that last stitch. 
Yeah. So if you if you panic when you're making your chain and you make your chain extra long and then you get to the end here and you're like, I don't want to have to unravel 42 stitches. Don't. Just cut it and unravel three. It's okay. Then I'm going to put another stitch marker in here just to sort of hold these together because it makes my heart happy. And that's it. Now you're going to go back to the bulky yarn. You'll do another chain of 168 plus a couple for insurance. And then you'll repeat strip two. So you'll work with the bulky yarn, but it'll connect through here on your fuzzy yarn. Then you'll do another strip of fuzzy yarn, and then another strip of bulky yarn, and so on and so on until you've got seven strips all joined together. Go ahead and work on that, and then come on back here when you're ready to put the border on and join it all together. So you should have all seven strips done and joined together. I only have three, but it works. Your first one is in the bulky, then your even numbered ones are in your fuzzy yarn, your odd numbered ones are in your bulky. When you finish the seventh strip, you're not going to fasten off because we're going to go right into our border stitches. So right from where we finished to right at the end of the seventh strip, we're going to chain one and then we're going to do three single crochets in the end of every row. So what I like to do is find the top of that last double crochet that I did go right into the top of that, do a single crochet, and then I'm really picky about doing single crochet in the ends of rows. You could just go in the space between these two double crochets, but that always adds another hole, and I feel like there's enough holes in crochet fabric to begin with, so I like to find somewhere in the body of the double crochet to go into, so that anchors my single crochet in that stitch and not in the space. And then where that double crochet went into the chain at the bottom is where I put the third one. So I'm going to take the stitch markers out here and I'll show you that. This is a little bit easier without those in the way. So you can see that there's there's a hole here in the chain where that double crochet went into the chain. That's where we're going to put our third single crochet. Now I don't work over my tails as I go along on here. I go back and I weave them in afterwards. Here we are in the next strip. That's the top of that double, so I'm going to do a single crochet there. Then it's a little bit harder with the fuzzy yarn, but really, wherever you can find a place to put your hook through, go ahead. And then in the chain at the bottom there, that's where the third one goes. Then you move on to the next strip. Get all those tails out of the way. Find the top of that double crochet. Make sure you're working with your working yarn and not one of the multiple tails that you're going to have down here. Then one into the body of the stitch. And then one into that chain at the bottom. Now here, I split my yarn, so that doesn't help. <laughs> Just try it again. Here, we're actually going to have to turn the corner to go down the other side. So this last stitch along the bottom edge becomes our corner. So we're actually going to do three single crochets into that same spot. That's going to take us from this edge over to this edge of the scarf. So we did one. We're going to do two more in that same stitch. That was two. Here's the third one. And now look, we're ready to work along the bottom of our first strip. And so we're just going to put one single crochet in each chain along the bottom of that first strip. Where these double crochets are, it's easy to see. You can just go right where that double crochet went through the chain and you can do your single crochet there and then into each chain along the bottom. So work your way along the bottom of strip one, one single crochet in each chain and meet me at the next corner. So you've made it across that first long side. Now we're going to work across the other short end. You did the one single crochet in that last chain. This is another corner. So this same stitch, we need to do three single crochets in there. So that was the first. Here's the second. Here's the third. Now we've got to do two more in the end of this row. I'm just going to take these stitch markers out of the way because I don't need them to make me feel good about the end of the scarf anymore. And this was 
the chain. When we did the chain of 68, we then went into the third chain from the hook to start the work. So this doesn't look like a double crochet. It's a bunch of chains. So I just like to use it that way. I go into the next chain for the second one and I go into the top of the double crochet for the third one. Now we're on to the next strip. We find the bottom chain and wiggle our way through. Sometimes you can't. You can use the hook as a hook, turn it around, let it help you get through the work. There's one. Then into that next stitch. There's two. Then into the top of that double crochet. There's three. And then the same on the next strip. You'll do this all the way across this short end. When you get to the last stitch, you'll do three single crochets in that last stitch. That'll put you in the place to then work along the last long side. And this last long side is the easiest part. I like to put the easiest part at the end because it makes it, it, makes it fly. It really goes faster because here you're working in the tops of stitches and in chains. So it's super easy to see where you need to go. One single crochet in the top of every double crochet and in every chain across until you get back to the last corner, which you will need to do two single crochets in that last stitch because we started with one. You need three to go around the corner. Work your way across these two sides and then meet me at that last corner. So I've done what feels like the last single crochet on this last side. But if I look, this is where I did my first one here. So this is where I want to do the last two to close up the last corner. So I'm going to do two single crochets here. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top of the first one that we did. And then we are done. Now, when you are making the full scarf and not just this little three strip sample, you will be pretty close to the end of your yarn, the yarn that you have when you get to this point. And that's one of the reasons why the bulky yarn is what we used for the border on this one. It's a beautiful yarn and you're going to have not very much left when you finish the seven strips. There's enough for the border plus a couple of yards and it just seemed silly to have just that little bit of this yarn left over. So why not use it in the border? Um, and at the same time, by holding the mohair yarn tripled, we also end up with not very much yarn at the end after you've done the, the strips with the mohair, but there's enough to do fringe. So what I like to do at this point is weave in the ends and they're all gonna be on this end. Let me grab my tapestry needle here and I'm just gonna weave in a couple of ends so you can see it. So the great thing with crochet is there's so much to every stitch. <laughs> there's a lot of places to hide your ends. So I'm going to pop through to the back of the work. So I'm looking at the wrong side and I'm going to weave through a couple of legs of stitches. Then I'm going to go down into the next row of stitches and maybe back around through here. And then maybe back up through here. And that feels like I've woven about an inch or an inch and a half length of yarn into the work. I'm gonna cut it and then I'll wiggle the piece a little bit so that end pops in and that's it. That end is woven in. So you're gonna have two ends for each of your strips. Um, and then you'll have one end from doing your border. Go ahead and weave those in until you don't have any more. And then I'll show you how we add the fringe. When you're ready for the fringe, it's really simple. You want to find, I don't know, a book, a block, something. You can wrap the yarn around and cut it into about 10 inch lengths, or you can just measure out 10 inches and cut your fringe that way. It takes longer this way, but it works. I'm just going to do a few pieces here so you can see. Now, keeping it in the triple stranding. And then what I'm going to do, slide it a little bit out of the way. And I'm going to go to our corner here. So there's those three 
single crochets that we did for the corner. I'm going to start in the bottom one. So I'm going to skip the one that's way out here and the one that's up there. I'm going to take a bit of my fringe that I caught, cut. I'm going to reach through. I'm going to catch that fringe with my hook and I'm going to pull it through to the front until I've pulled through about half of it and I know it's going to stay put. I'm going to open up that loop. I'm going to grab those two strands and I just pull it in place and it locks itself in place. And I'm going to do that in every stitch along each of the short edges. Now, if you have a little extra and you want to quadruple strand this or go back and add a couple more pieces of fringe, you can certainly do that. But I did 10 inch lengths, triple stranded, one in each stitch along each of the short ends. And there was a little bit left over, but not much and not enough for another project. So I really, my goal with this one was to use up as much of the yarn as we could in this project. So you're not always left with partial skeins and partial balls that just fill up your stash but are not super useful unless you're doing a scrappy kind of project. So that's how you add your fringe. And then when you're all done, this is the great thing with the mohair, it really sticks to itself. So you don't have to do anything special to get it to lay flat so that you can trim the end so it's nice and even. You just need really sharp scissors is all. And then you're good. As far as blocking on this one goes, I hit it with a little bit of steam, but it's so loosely interconnected that there isn't really a solid structure to this scarf. Um, you can see when I grab the actual scarf and bring it over here that the end here wants to, it wants to curl out, like it really wants to curve. And if I, if I pull on it this way, it really moves. If I pull on it that way, it really moves. So you don't have to worry about being super conscious of blocking it and making sure you get it to the right measurements because it's all gonna move. I mean, look how wide you can get this. It's not gonna stay that way. The minute I pick it up, it goes skinny again. Um, so you can certainly block it just to sort of settle the stitches, but don't be super precious about it. You can wet block it if you want. You can steam block it. I usually steam block it. But I just laid it on a flat surface and hit it with a closed steamer just to sort of settle the stitches. And then you're ready to go to wear your new Polar Sky scarf. I hope you've had fun with the interlocking chain construction of this scarf. I hope that you love the colors. If you haven't yet, you can pick up a kit at onebighappy.com or at the description, uh, at the link in the description below, um, and post your pictures. Hop into our Facebook group, hop over to Instagram, tag us in, let us know what you're working on. We love to see your projects. I'll see you in our next tutorial. Happy crocheting!